Hello summoners, how's it going? My name is Crumbs and in this video I'll give you a rundown of the latest Korean builds for patch 12.13. We cover a variety of builds, from new, optimized ones players have innovated to major variations that players make for specific situations or matchups. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this and let's get started. If you're unfamiliar with this series, do not worry, we always start with the top lane. And I want to make that very clear because oddly enough in this case, our very first new build is for Taric. Taric is surprisingly powerful in combat. He's able to spam heals on himself and also take advantage of his passive for more damage in the process. With extra XP and solo lane gold, he's able to purchase more expensive items and scale up and act as both a frontliner and enchanter for his team. It's worth noting that most players trying this build are using Ghost. Taric, like I said before, and you better believe it, deals a lot of damage. This comes from his passive and basic attacks, so by running Ghost, you'll have an easier time chasing your enemies down when they get overconfident. Otherwise, running Ghost is great for escaping ganks after level 6, since you'll be able to pop your ultimate and book it. That said, certain junglers like Jarvan can punish you very hard for not taking flash, but in most situations, ticking ghost is just as safe. For your runes, take Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Conditioning, Revitalize, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. His items are Frozen Heart, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Moonstone Renewer, Winter's Approach, Gargoyle Stoneplay, and Redemption. Luckily, there's a decent amount of mana you can rush for this build. This ensures that you'll have enough mana for longer fights in the top lane as spamming your Q will quickly drain it. Before moving forward, I also want to let you guys know about our coaching staff over at ProGuides.com. You can even have your replays reviewed by our experts for a detailed analysis of what you need to do in order to improve. So make sure to check out our website for more details. Next up, we'll talk about Shen. He's been performing very well as of late and it's definitely worth mentioning the build players are running. First, you want to take Flash and Ignite. Shen mains have been doing this for a while now since you don't really need teleport on him. His ultimate can replace the summoner spell as he's basically able to teleport to an ally and simultaneously provide them with a massive shield. The extra damage and healing reduction adds a ton of kill pressure and isn't something that should be taken for granted. For your runes, take Grasp of the Undying, Cheap Shot, Second Wind, Revitalize, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For his items, build Defensive Boots, Turbo Camp Tank, Redemption, Mikhail's Crucible, Randuin's Omen, and finally a Thorn Mail versus Heavy Healing or Spirit Visage against AP teams. Shen acts as a powerful warden. He's a frontline tank that specializes in protecting his allies rather than locking down enemies. Running Redemption and Mikhail's ensures he'll be able to protect his strongest allies in their time of need. That's gonna be it for our top lane build, so we'll put up a recap on the screen for y'all. Take note or save them, and let's move into the jungle builds next. It's been a while since we saw him in the jungle, but Mordekaiser is back. There isn't too much to talk about since his setup is identical to his top lane one. However, I will let you know that while jungling, players like to take Ghost instead of Flash. Since you're the one ganking, not the one getting ganked, you have more freedom to drop Flash for more combat power and a lower cooldown. In cases where the enemy jungler wants to fight, Mordekaiser is more than capable of winning against most of them, especially post 6. For his runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Revitalize, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. For your items, you're going Rift Maker, Defensive Boots, Rhylice Crystal Scepter, Demonic Embrace, Zhonya's Hourglass, and Spirit Visage. The next build is for one of the stars of Arcane, and no, I'm not talking about Jinx Jungle, although that would be exactly on brand as it is absolutely insane. I'm talking about her sister, Vi. She's consistently been seeing a moderate amount of play and as of late, players have been opting into more damaged focus builds on her. That said, let me give you a quick rundown of what players are running. For runes, take Hail of Blades, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. For her items, build Trinity Force, Defensive Boots, Death Stance, Maw of Malmordius, Guardian Angel, and Randuin's Omen. Taking Trinity Force ends up making Vi squishier, but much better at taking out squishies. 
Although you do miss out on some penetration, taking Trinity Force provides more ability haste as well as a sizable AD increase after she maxes out the stacks on it. The slight boost in movement speed it grants is a nice addition as well. As we finish up the jungle, I'll also ask our new question of the day. Are you excited for Udyr's upcoming rework? Why or why not? I am on the fence. And while you can expect a really badass rework like what they did with Volibear, there's a sweet spot in my heart for such a simple champion that somehow finds its way into the hands of some of the best junglers in the world and just styles on all the season 12 champions. Just run at them in bear stands, switch to a bird and run them down. But that's my thoughts, let me know yours in the comments down below and let's continue the video. That's gonna be for our jungle bills anyhow, so we'll throw them up on the screen again for you, take one last note of them and let's move on to mid lane builds next. Over in the mid lane, we'll start with a build for Soraka. Like with Tarek, who we mentioned earlier, you've got a support who ends up supercharged from having solo XP and gold, Soraka is also a nuisance to lane against, as she's able to deal a significant amount of damage with her Q, and also heal back any damage she takes in the process. As the game moves forward, she provides an immense amount of utility for her team, and in spite of the nerf to her ultimate, she remains very powerful. This is especially apparent when her enemies do not build Grievous Wounds. For her runes, take Summon Airy, Nullifying Orb, Transcendence, Scorch, Second Wind, Revitalize, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Also know that many players take Exhaust, as it'll make her much safer to pick in the early game. Exhaust also does a great job at keeping her alive in late game teamfights when the entire enemy team is out to get you. For your items, build Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Moonstone Renewer, Redemption, Zonya's Hourglass, Chemtech Putrefire, and Seraph's Embrace. Our next mid lane build is for Tristana. With the growing popularity of mages, Tristana is back in action with her powerful early game as well as late game scaling. Whether she snowballs out of control in the beginning or the enemy team manages to stall to the late game, Tristana is always a relevant threat. While Trist is definitely a powerful late game pick, she does very well against immobile mages since she can just jump on them twice after detonating her bomb. This results in her having a strong early game and a powerful mid to late, especially when ahead. For runes, take Pressed the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Gras, Demolish, Second Wind, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Demolish is surprisingly powerful, especially if she manages to pick up a lead in lane. Even if she can't kill her enemies, if Tristana lands enough poke, she's able to cash out on some serious turret plating after forcing them to recall. Her items are Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Blade of the Ruined King, LDR, Infinity Edge, and either Wit's End or Guardian Angel. That wraps up the mid lane builds, so make sure to take another look at this screen for a recap of those. And now, let's talk about the bottom lane. More and more, we're beginning to see Nico played in the bottom lane. Taking advantage of her high on-hit damage from W, players are building attack speed and plenty of on-hit effects to turn her into a mixed damage marksman that just can't be ignored. One of the best parts about Nico is that she can peel for herself with her ultimate and E. She also has her W to fake enemies out, making her one of the hardest marksmen to dive. Four runes take Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Cut Down, Biscuit Delivery, Magical Footwear, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. For her items, build Blade of the Rune King, Berserker's Greaves, Ginsu's Rage Blade, Kraken Slayer, Lord Dominic's Regards, and Wit's End. The goal of this build is clear, build as much attack speed and on-hit effects as possible. With an immense amount of attack speed built, she's also able to quickly activate her passive for the bonus movement speed, granting her great mobility to make use of. For supports, one champion to look out for is Twisted Fate. He's a roaming monster, most notably after level 6. It's inevitable that everyone needs to recall eventually, so after level 6, every time he either dies or needs to reset, it opens up a ton of ambiguity. Twisted Fate is free to roam to assist either of his solo laners, and he's also free to gank mid from the bottom lane if he and his lane partner are able to push up. So for your runes, take Predator, Cheap Shot, Ghost Pora, Relentless Hunter, Celerity, Water Walking, Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and the Defensive Rune. Taking Predator allows Twisted Fate to force an engage whenever his opponents are low enough or if one of his allies decides to gank for him. 
Four items, build Spell Thief's Edge, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Everfrost, Rapid Fire Cannon, Zonya's Hourglass, and Wardstone. Wrapping up the video, we have a bot lane combo. We've got a double mage lane packing a serious punch with some insane burst damage. This duo does very well in team comps that want to run an AD mid laner and also catches most players off guard as it's hard to anticipate during champion select. The idea is that anytime Vagar lands his stun, it's a guaranteed kill with a combination of their burst damage. Ziggs can push them into the edge of the cage with his W, meaning that the Vagar doesn't have to be perfectly precise, just close enough to set up the combo. For Vagar's setup, take Electrocute, Taste of Blood, Ghost Pora, Relentless Hunter, Mana Flow Ban, Transcendence, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Spell Thief's Edge, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Everfrost, Zonya's Hourglass, Death Cap, and Void Staff. Meanwhile, Ziggs takes Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For his items, you're building Luden's Echo, Sork Shoes, Seraph's Embrace, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, and Hourglass. A final note is that Vagar runs Barrier while Ziggs takes Teleport. Since Ziggs is able to push in lanes with ease, taking TP allows him to replenish his mana when necessary. With Vagar running Barrier, Ziggs is able to play a little further back and make use of his higher range. That's it for the bottom lane builds, so we'll put them up on the screen for you all to review. All that said and done, we finished up our Korean builds for patch 12.13. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and like always, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below and expand the description if you're interested in joining our Discord community. And as always, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.